One of man's greatest inventions has been the submarine. Using the entire ocean as a hiding place, she uh, hits hard and then she runs fast. Now, should she be spotted at the surface, then she has the capability of submerging very, very quickly, usually in less than about 60 seconds. And to the submariner, that's known as a crash dive. Take her down before we're spotted. That baby might mount enough guns to blast us to kingdom come. Take her down. Now, aboard the submarine, there's no time for error. The crew of 80 acts as one man. A complex operation of a 310-foot ship such as this is possible only through training, discipline, and constant attention to duty. Now, to tell us about the submarine, we have invited as our first guest one of the Navy's top-ranking officers. For years before he became a fleet admiral, he was also a top-notch submariner, and so it's with considerable pleasure that we welcome once again to Science in Action, Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz. How are you, sir? <clears throat> well, I'm delighted to be aboard, participate in this program. I heard you say that the submarine was one of man's greatest inventions. It might be that, and it's most evil one, too. But submarines have earned a place in the navies of the world. Their effectiveness in World War I and World War II earned them a place in the navies of the world for the predictable future. They have many capabilities, and one of the people who is most competent to tell you about those capabilities is here in your studio tonight, Admiral Charles Lockwood. Well, you know, uh, Admiral, I was very interested in reading the forward uh, to his book, Sink em All, Submarine Warfare in the Pacific, and I'd just like to uh, read that once again. Now, we had many submarine captains, but only one Lockwood. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I still stick to that story. Well, we're quite fortunate, as I say, in having him here with us at, uh, on Science and Action. So I'd like to have you meet uh, Vice Admiral Charles Lockwood. How are you, sir? <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Harold. How do, Charles? Very happy to see you again, sir. Well, gentlemen, we're here for a specific purpose, to learn something about submarines, so I suggest we let Admiral Lockwood take us on a tour, starting right now. Fine. <coughs> Well, Doctor, this uh, simplified diagram of the USS Nautilus, the world's first atomic-powered submarine, will serve to give us the general overall picture of our standard fleet-type submarines. They're divided into eight compartments, each of which may be sealed off from the others. This forward compartment is the forward torpedo room. It contains the six bow tubes and also the reload torpedoes. The next compartment is called the forward battery room. Below the deck, it has enormous storage batteries which are used to propel the ship when submerged. Above it are the officer's quarters and the chief petty officer's quarters. These quarters are very small, but they're very comfortable and very handy. Well, then, this next section would be the control room, and uh, on a standard type submarine, you'd have the conning tower up here. But since this is the Nautilus, uh, then the uh, conning tower would be right in this section. That's correct. And in the standard submarine, these next two compartments would contain the mess room, the galley, and the crew's bunk room. I might add that in the galley, we prepare the Navy's best food prepared by the best cooks in the Navy. Well, that's certainly something very close to me because I sure like food. Well, now, uh, this matter of propulsion, being a landlubber, I am very much interested in just how a submarine gets through the water, its propelling power. Now, how about that? Well, the submarine has two systems awesome. On the surface, she uses her diesel engines, which can generate about 6,500 horsepower and propel her at a speed of about 20 knots. For surface submersion, uh, surface propulsion, she has enormous storage batteries all along the keel here, which produce power for driving her submerged. Well, in other words, then, uh, if uh, you didn't have one of these snorkels and you wanted to go um, below the water, then you'd have to use the batteries for that uh, sort of uh, work. That's correct. Well, now, of course, all of us are familiar with car batteries, but this king-size battery that we have over here is something a little bit different. Perhaps uh, uh, you can tell us how many uh, batteries of this type you have in a normal uh, standard submarine. Well, as you can see, this battery is, stands almost as high as a man. Mm -hmm. It weighs a little less than a ton, and it costs about $1,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. There are 120 of these in a submarine, and at full power, they're able to propel the submarine uh, for about 10 miles. About at 10 minimum miles. power, they're able to propel the submarine for about 100 miles. About 100 miles. And then, of course, uh, you have to come back to the service and recharge the batteries. That's correct. 
except <clears throat> that when you have a snorkel, you can charge while submerged. Mm, this snorkel is quite interesting. Just how does that work now? Uh, well, this snorkel is simply a, an extensible breathing tube which brings air down to the engines and to the crew. The exhaust comes up this after pipe. Uh, using those engines, you can recharge your, your batteries while submerged, and you can also propel yourself to submerge while showing nothing more than this small snorkel float. Oh, that's certainly very effective. Well, that gives us a good idea as to the propelling power, but uh, now, this matter of uh, submerging the ballast, I wonder if you could demonstrate on this chart up here just what happens when a submarine does uh, go under. <coughs> well, in the first chart, we see the submarine on surface with no water in her main ballast tanks, which surround the hull. Yes. The main vents are then opened, and the water starts to flood into the ballast tank. She's now in a wash condition. In the third picture, she is completely submerged with her main ballast tanks full and her main vents closed. Well, then, when you want to come back to service, you'd have to put compressed air and blow this water out of these compartments, right? That's correct. And then that would be tied in with these diving fins or planes on the uh, yes. two ends of the surface. The most important thing about diving or surfacing is the control of the boat. In diving, these bow planes are set down to give the ship an angle down. Mm -hmm. 